Hey, what's up? Good morning, everybody. This is April at the Resellers Learning Curve. Today is Wednesday, February the uh, 7th. <laughs> I believe today's the 7th. Today's Wednesday. I wanted to make a video today to go over some of my best sourcing finds from the past week. I know I've said in every video recently that... Um, the first quarter is always my absolute best sourcing quarter. And that's why even when I don't need to source, like right now, it's still really hard for me not to be out there because I know that people are cleaning out their closets, they're cleaning out their cupboards, they're cleaning out their shelves, they're cleaning out their garages, and people are donating a ton of things. So I love sourcing and January, February, March is absolutely my favorite time of the year to get out there and find interesting things so I've been out there a lot um I'm trying to think what's the phrase the kids use um they out there like that's me right now like I am definitely out there in those streets pounding the pavement um in Salvation Army at least two to three times a week until the store closes at seven because for some reason our Salvation Army has gotten really surprisingly pleasantly unpredictable and just the amazing things that I found there so I have so much stuff here I'm gonna try to give you guys the top 10 items I think I've sourced this week and hopefully I can get them all listed right now I am not listing clothing as fast as hard goods and the reason that I'm not listing clothing as fast as hard goods is because I am working to train a new photo assistant for my eBay listings and in the meantime I'm not trying to dump a ton of stuff on her I want her to be well trained and I want her to be set up for success and be able to execute what I need her to do so I've held off on listing a lot of things because I feel like they need a mannequin I feel like they really really need that special touch that that extra love that I can't give an item by just doing a flat lay all of my clothing items that I've done the past many months have been flat lays and occasionally I get clothes that I just don't feel are appropriate for a flat lay in which case I'll hold on to those until um until the until I can get them listed like they need to be listed so right now I'm going to give you the top 10 things that I found this week I think and some of them are not as exciting as others some of them I have not completed the research on but there's just so much good stuff I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's amazing out there right now. The first thing I want to talk about is this Seth Thomas ship's clock. This is a really, really cool old World War II ship's clock. Um, Seth Thomas, I believe, made the, the clocks for the Navy. Some of them actually will say um, commissioned by U.S. Navy on the face. This one does not. Apparently, this material is back-like. Um, which I did not know, so I had a hard time researching it before I figured that out. But this unscrews, it opens. I do not have the key for it, so I can't really wind it and test it. But I did open up the clock and I checked out the movement. I actually took pictures of the actual movement, the thing that makes the clock tick on the inside for the listing. This clock was made in June of 1944, which makes it just like super, super cool. Um, this is listed for 200 bucks. And as of right now, it has eight watchers and it's been listed for probably four or five days. So this is listed. I was trying to find it this morning and then I realized I had it rolled up all delicately in the towel because I just, I don't want anything to happen to this. Super, super cool item. This clock was $35 to Salvation Army. Seth Thomas, you can see like all of my mess stuff. Like you can see like all of the reflections of like what's going on in my room in this clock. So, um, ship's clock. The next thing I found last night, and I actually listed this last night. This is a women's Kooji sweater. It's the Mercenized Cotton. Um, not super bright, not super exciting. I never find the amazing Kooji's. I don't. I mean, I find Kooji. I do. I find the brand, but I never find the crazy, colorful, wild ones that, you know, just look super amazing. I always find these 
kind of mundane, a little bit tame, almost pedestrian Coogees. But you know what? It's Coogee. I'll take it. I want to say this was $3.99 at Salvation Army. And like I said, I did list this either late last night or this morning. So that needs to be bagged up and get ready to go to the storage unit. The next thing I have is a vintage piece I picked up last night. The brand is Mondi. Mondi, I believe. My lighting is like super bad this morning. I tried. I gave it a shot. M-O-N-D-I is the brand. This is a vintage dress with two rows of buttons, as you can see. Um, it has the velvet flip cuffs. It's just like, it's a it's a cool vintage piece. I'll probably get 40 to 50 on that. And I want to say that was like $3.99 at Salvation Army. I've really been working to step my game up when it comes to vintage. That's an area that... I've said a million times, if you want to be a successful reseller, you have to have some proficiency in vintage things. It doesn't necessarily have to be close, but in something vintage, you have to know some things or you're really going to struggle because, I mean, everybody's looking at the new shiny stuff. It's where you really set yourself apart and where you find the most opportunity is looking at the old worn stuff that nobody else is paying attention to. That's what I do. When I go to a store, if everybody's like crowding around a cart or crowding around whatever, I don't crowd. I don't, I don't crowd. I go off. Like <sighs> I have this personal space thing in thrift stores that's a little weird because it is a store people are allowed to shop there but when I'm in a thrift store I really hate for people to be super close to me like I need to spread out I'm I have a long wingspan in case you didn't know I'm six foot one and my wingspan is actually taller um, it's longer than I am tall so my arms are super long I have my car my purse my coat like I need space I need space. So for that reason, I've been doing a lot more Salvation Army shopping than Goodwill shopping because there are people that hang out at Goodwill all day, every day, and they don't ever leave. Whereas Salvation Army, there are times when I can go in there and there literally will be like two other shoppers in the store and the store is twice as big. So I've been really hanging out tough at Salvation Army these days. Um, the next thing I found last night, I don't even know why this is in a pile other than I just like it. This is a vest, not vintage. This is pretty recent. If you've been a reseller for any amount of time, you already know this is Patagonia. It's just a, a lady's brown vest. I thought it was cute. Um, I want to say this was $2.99, which is why I got it. I haven't looked up the soles on it. It's kind of in rough condition a little bit, like around the, the cotton the cotton lining areas are in rough condition. But otherwise, it's super cute. I love Patagonia. I have a red Patagonia fleece. If you've watched my videos for a while, you've probably seen it a dozen times because I absolutely love my red Patagonia fleece. I live in it. And I'm almost positive it was $10 at a consignment store. I planned to sell it when I bought it, but then I tried it on and you know what happened. So the next thing I found last night is this St. John sweater, which I'm keeping for a little bit. It's the yellow tag, which is their, um, this is their younger line. It's also, this is St. John's Sport today. Like the label used to say St. John's Sport and it was made for a slightly younger demographic. Well, instead of the label saying St. John's Sport, now you have these yellow labels and I have it on this hanger very carefully. But like I said, for right now, I'm gonna keep this it's kind of interesting. I probably won't keep it forever because quite frankly, the brown and the gray together don't don't make me happy. Like I just I think blah. Like <laughs> those colors aren't exciting to me. I'm a color person, but who knows? Who knows? And I don't have any more current recent St. John pieces in my in my wardrobe. So, I'm considering adding that one unless I find something more awesome. Who knows? The next thing I wanted to show you guys is another brand that I've never heard of. This literally happens to me eight or nine times a week. And I actually have to get back to Salvation Army today to pick up a blazer that I put back last night. I had it in my hand. I had it in my hand so long, I actually took pictures of it. It was a women's blazer. I took pictures of it because the quality 
was really notable. The quality was notable. But when I searched it on eBay, I actually spelled the brand wrong and I didn't find anything. So when I got home, I'm looking through my pictures because oftentimes in thrift stores when I'm running low on time, I won't just buy everything that I'm interested in. I'll take pictures of the labels, of the marks, whatever the case may be. I'll take those pictures and then I will research those when I get home. And if it's something that I need to buy, then I'll go back and get it. But this blazer, I'm fingers crossed that it's still there. I'm hoping to be able to shoot a video about it later and talk about the brand because it's one that I have never seen anybody talk about. I've never seen posted. There's not a lot of souls on eBay. All you can really find is, um, or you can find our retail items for the most part. And those retail items are going for crazy money. Crazy, crazy money. So I can't believe I put this back. I can't believe I misspelled the brand. I can't believe I honestly just ignored my gut and did not go with my first instinct, which was the quality on this piece is exceptional, so you need to buy it. So I'm kicking myself today, and I'm hoping the pink blazer is still there because I knew. I knew when I touched it. But here's another brand I didn't know anything about as of yesterday. The brand is Wilfred, W-I-L-F-R-E-D. This thing was $2 and I can't determine if it's faded or covered in lint. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be gray. I'm not sure if it needs to be dry cleaned. <laughs> I just, I don't know yet. I need to do more research on it. This is their cocoon sweater. Um, and these sweaters, honestly, were going for really good money, like $30, $40 and up. And this actually fits me. So I may get it dry cleaned and keep it because it, it it's a cocoon sweater and it feels super, super comfortable. I like this. Obviously, it's pretty rough. I had these things hanging up to knock some wrinkles out in preparation for listing. But this is Wilford, W-I-L-F-R-E-D. And it's the cocoon sweater. And like I said, I'm not sure about the color. I'm not sure about the condition. I may show it some love today and see if I can bring it back to life. But this is super cool. It was super cheap. I've never heard of this brand. So that's why I wanted to mention it to you guys. Wilford, W-I-L-F-R-E-D, Wilfred. I don't pronounce things great sometimes. If you didn't know, I grew up down south. And so I don't think I learned how to pronounce a lot of words correctly. So I'll say things and people say, what? As they're laughing at me, like orange, iron. I will say things and people are like laughing in my face. Like, what are you saying? And I'm like, orange. And they're confused because why do you pronounce it like that? Well, just so you know, I have a bit of an accent. It's not that detectable, from, but from time to time, you can tell. She's not from up north. That's what's going on. The next thing I want to show you guys is a vintage coat. I picked this up last week in the Salvation Army. Um, it also needs some love and the wrinkles knocked out. Not something that I've ever picked up before. Not something that I would pick up normally. This is Lane Bryant. I'm trying to like miss the light but show you guys the labels. It's like tough this morning. Lane Bryant. Okay, this coat is super vintage Lane Bryant. It has a faux fur collar. Um, I don't know if it's like a swing coat. It's fully lined, super heavy, really, really nice. Like, honestly, it's just a beautiful coat. What I noticed in doing the research about these vintage Lane Bryant coats is that they sell the best in the UK. I don't know why, I can't explain it. I, I have no idea, but they sell the best in the UK. So my plan is to make sure that, um, I need to look into whether or not you can promote listings specifically by countries. Because if you can, that's what I would wanna do with this. I would want to promote this over in the United Kingdom the most because that's where these items seem to sell the best is in the UK. The next thing I want to show you guys, I almost don't want to show you because I'm almost convinced, pretty convinced. This is a orphan jacket, an orphan suit coat, which is really disappointing because I just sold the wool cashmere blazer in this brand for 150 bucks. But this, I'm going to try to get off for like 60, 75 bucks. I need to get it listed. And the brand is Suit Supply. 
like I said, this is definitely almost certainly the store did not get the pants. So I don't know if the guy kept the pants. I don't know if he never bought the pants. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the pants. Um, but my last suit supply, which like I said, was a wool cashmere blend sport coat. So for 150 bucks. So I'm going to list this and try to get at least half of that. We'll see what happens. I don't know because it's an orphan suit jacket. You never want those. Those aren't fine. The next thing I want to show you guys, I'm trying to get through this quick because it's morning. You know the story. <laughs> um, I picked these up last night, posted them to my group because this is a brand that I would not know about if it wasn't for the smart people in the Resellers Learning Curve Facebook group. The brand is Laura Ashley. Now this dress, size four, denim shirt dress, this one's not that exciting, mostly because it was made in China. Um, it's probably the last of what could be considered vintage. This dress is probably from the late 90s, maybe early 2000s. I haven't completed my research yet, but that is the first Laura Ashley dress that I've ever found. And then I found this dress, and then I had to check the rest of the rack because I didn't know if there was more of them. Okay, this is also Laura Ashley, but this one was made in Great Britain. This one is my size, so I'll probably end up trying it on at some point. Um, super cute feminine cut has the buttons in the back by this be by this one being made in Great Britain it will most likely do much much better but I found my first two Laura Ashley dresses I found those last night very exciting I'm gonna get them listed I'm not expecting all of the money I know the green dress was 99 cent and I think the blue dress was a dollar 99 or something at Salvation Army they've really 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 worked on their pricing which makes me very happy because I like Salvation Army I support their mission as a person in recovery. I love what they do for people that are in recovery, for the community. Like they just provide a lot of community assistance. Like they're the feet on the ground. For that reason, I always feel better about shopping at Salvation Army than I do about shopping at Goodwill. So um, I'm really happy that they're coming down on their clothing pricing. The next thing I posted to Instagram when I found it, it was my only recent yellow tag I want to say yellow tag yeah yellow tag pickup from TJ Maxx Marshalls um, the brand is for love and liberty I'm gonna show you this tag for love and liberty and this brand is made by Johnny was I don't know if this is gonna focus but if it does you can see that this shirt retailed for $218 this is beautiful Look at this. I haven't even taken the security tag off, even though I'm definitely not returning this. This was $12, and it retailed for $218. So this is the only recent thing that I have picked up, and I got this at TJ Maxx. It was the only one. You know I checked for more. The brand is For Love and Liberty by Johnny Was, and this top was $12. Got that on clearance at TJ Maxx, and I'm super excited about it. The last clothing item I want to show you guys is a sweater that I picked up at my girl miss pat's store she's been trying to process all of her clothing so she can see if she has more shoes in this trailer from this unit they picked up and in the clothing that she processed i only i looked this up on a whim because i had never heard of the brand if you haven't noticed the pattern please notate that pattern right now i look up almost anything that i've never come across experienced seen because to me if I have not seen it, and I've been doing this for sure since 2013, 14, if I haven't seen it in four or five years, then it's different. It's different. So this is something that I picked up. Double D Ranch from Miss Pat's. And this was $3.99, but it was also, she's running half off on all her clothes. So I got this for $2.00 and some change it's a sweater honestly it's in rough condition i'm gonna show you like the cuffs and stuff so you can see the cotton's really worn i've been working with it with the sweater shaver it still needs some more work um it has the laces down the side in leather which is a really different feature but this sweater will go for a hundred a hundred and fifty 
maybe close to 200 bucks. Like I haven't seen a ton of them that have the fur collar, but even ones without the fur collar sell for 200 bucks. So I'm really excited about finding this Double D Ranch sweater. Like I said, it was a brand that I previously knew nothing about. So yay, I've learned so much and I found so much amazing stuff. And I'm not even showing, like there is a, a pile like high, there's a high pile in the corner of my room which is all hard goods that I've listed that need to go to the storage unit. And I'm talking about there's everything from a, a Lolita uh, wine glass. Lolita, look that up, wine glass. Some of them do super well. There's an Auric handheld vacuum cleaner, a really expensive heavy jewelry box, a caller ID phone with a clock radio. That usually sells for over $70, $80 on eBay. Um, just all types of stuff, guys. I've been finding amazing stuff. And the last thing I wanted to show you is I picked up two books. One of them is, I'm not going to even pronounce this because I'm not, I don't know anything about mythology and I don't want to butcher something that's near and dear to people. I'm still doing my research on this because I'm looking for the copy that says illustrated by Alex, Alex and Martin Provinson. Um, I found some little blurbs about them, but this copy is a sixth printing it looks like six printing 1966 copyright 1956 by golden pressed um honestly i feel like i might want to read it to my daughter first i'm not in a hurry to sell this because this is a really really cool copy of this book um the iliad and the odyssey so i took a stab at it maybe i don't know I picked this up. I might not sell it. It may go in the personal library, the, the family library for a while. We do tend to hoard books around here. Um, I like to pride myself on being a nerd and I'm hoping that my kids are also nerds and like to read all the things. So I'm gonna hold on to that for a minute and continue to do my research. I don't wanna underprice it. I don't wanna overprice it, but until I know that story or what is all included in that book, I can't really sell it because the one category where I consistently get my butt kicked in jeopardy is mythology. I don't know anything about mythology. So I'm trying to level up in mythology and that book might be able to help me. The second book that I picked up yesterday because they're super cheap, they're like 50 cents or a dollar at Salvation Army is called Casting Copper Base Alloys. This book I picked up, shout out to my girl Tanya over at Thrifty Treasures. This I picked up because Tanya always says, if you see a book that does not have a barcode, make sure to look it up, like go through the extra trouble. This book is not printed a ton. Um, this is from the American Foundry Men's Society in um, Illinois. So, I don't know how much this is going to go for, but if I had to take a stab in the dark, this book is going to be like 45, 60, 45 to 60 bucks is my guess. And this was, like I said, maybe a dollar or two of Salvation Army. And I only picked up the two books because, quite frankly, what I'm doing right now is I'm readjusting everything that I ever thought I knew about reselling. I'm touching things that I've never touched. I'm looking at things that I never thought to look at. And I'm really, really trying to level up on my skills. And most importantly, I'm trying to level up on my knowledge. Because if you saw my sales breakdown video, the one thing that is most clear is that I've found this place and I've kind of plateaued. And I don't want to plateau. I'm trying to elevate this year. We had to pick a, a word of the year. Our company asked us for my job to pick a word of the year. And my word of the year this year was elevate. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to level up. So as such, I can't do what I've always did because you know what that means. You just get what you always got. I want to do better than I've ever done. And so I am looking at things I've never looked at, listing things I've never listed, learning about things I never knew about. And in the end, even if I don't necessarily make more money, I'll know more. So it's, it's a win-win like I cannot lose in this situation and that makes me pretty pretty excited so that's all I have for you guys today I hope that you've learned something from this video I'm having a blast sourcing if you don't follow the Facebook group the resellers learning curve on Facebook I encourage you to join the group there's weekly threads there's a lot of people posting lots of awesome stuff um, 
I'm not the only person that posts. We have a tipping Tuesday thread that a member does. We have a vintage Friday thread that a member does. We do our sale of the week threads on Thursday. I'm trying to bring some consistency to the room so that there's always content being added. But if you're not over there already, I definitely encourage you to join. It's a super, super awesome place. And I, like I said, I learn stuff all the time. I would have known nothing about Laura Ashley dresses if it wasn't for my group. So I encourage you guys to join the Facebook group. On that note, I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. And I will talk to you soon. Later. Bye.